Oh, thank you. Uh, like I said, it's a great win for our seniors. Really happy for them. They they worked extremely hard all week long, and I thought our assistant coaches and our team did a good job getting ready for the game. Hard fought, you know. When you watch the video, we went back and forth, and uh, both teams had their chances, and we were able to make a few more plays than they did. And, uh, really liked the way we played defense in the fourth quarter. The way we were able to stop the running back and. One of the things our defensive coaches did a good job in their two-minute offense, you know, they have continued to run the ball. Uh, and that allowed them to win a couple games uh, prior to ours. So we did a good job understanding that they weren't just going to throw the ball in their two-minute offense, that they were going to run it also. Yeah, just uh, closing up the season this week. Just uh, your thoughts on Indiana State. Um, what they've been able to do this year. They've been close in a few big ones. Yeah, they had a really good game against North Dakota State. You know, leading most the entire game, got beat in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, one of the issues is who their quarterback's going to be. Uh, they've got a, a young freshman that started early in the year and middle of the year that uh, played really well for him. He's been out lately with a concussion, so I'm not sure what his status is. Uh, and then the guy they brought in last week to play, you know, led him to a, a victory. So we'll, we'll have to prepare for both of them. Um, that's something that will, you know, obviously have to happen. Uh, they're going to run the ball and, and throw the RPO game. And then defensively, they give you a lot of different looks, like the pressure. And uh, we just got to do a good job of recognizing what they're in and, and making sure that we play fast. I think that's the big thing on offense for us is that we play fast. Saw some offensive line improvement in this last game. Just uh, those guys continue to keep fighting, trying to get better. Yeah, I thought they worked really hard in practice. We played a couple younger guys. Gio got in there and played a lot at one of the guard spots. And Mark Hutchinson played a little bit at the other one. Uh, I thought that helped us rotating them in and, and keeping them fresh. Uh, but, you know, Ian had a really good game and BB had a really good game. Uh, so that, that helped a lot. That, that allowed us to use Ryan inside and, uh, you know, keep, keep help with those guards and the tackles manned up. You, you still have some, uh, some guys from that unit coming back for next year. Um, just what do you look at for what you're going to try to do this offseason to try to improve that and uh, um, try to make that solidify that so it's better next year? Yeah, I think there's no question that the guys coming back will be better with the experience and they'll get bigger and stronger. Uh, I feel like we have a good young group of old linemen that you know haven't played yet. Uh, Christian is really good. He's big. He's six five and a half, three hundred twenty pounds, and he's been backing up all year. Um, but we haven't gotten him in the game. Um, Chio's going to be really good. He's strong and physical. He played really really hard. His effort at the at guard was really good. Um, we should have another guy coming back that had to leave go home and get back surgery um, that we liked a lot when he was here. He's excited about coming back in January. So he, he was in our signing class last year. So that, that'll help too. But, uh, you know, we talked about how you develop the offensive line and, and that's what's going to have to happen. We're going to have to make sure that those guys keep getting bigger and stronger and have a great off season. I was going to say, with, um, you got the big senior day, senior day win. You're playing a team that's only won two games last year or this season. How do you keep that the intensity that you had going to this game up for that game? You know, trying that thing. You've already done it. Everything. Yeah, they make you make the issue about us. You know, us doing our job and us doing our preparation and you know going out and, and finishing the way we want to play. Let's show improvement on offense, show improvement on defense, and on special teams. And you know, I really felt like this was a, a game where all three phases won. Uh, special teams, offense, and defense, and that allowed us to win the game. Uh, talking about the senior day, one of the seniors that was recognized was Kevon Latulis. Kevon played a big part of the success that you had on Saturday. 70 plus yards on the ground. This is a guy that's been your running back, been a wide receiver, got put back in that running spot, and really enjoyed a lot of success on Saturday. Did a great job. You know, competed extremely hard, broke a lot of tackles. One of the things going into the game we wanted to do was have yards after contact and yards after catch. Uh, and we ended up, you know, breaking 32 tackles as, a, as an offense. So that was a, a, a really good job of emphasizing it and then getting the result. And Kevon played a big part in that. And, 
you know, like I said after the game, he's a guy that has all kinds of energy, smile on his face every day, works really hard every single play. Think Jason Shelley will get a shot to play some pro ball at some level? I would think he would. Yeah, you know, I think you know he's he's had enough production and the way he plays the game is is uh, intelligence, the way he can distribute the ball. Um, I would think he'll get a shot somewhere. Ty Scott and Matre seem like they were kind of teasing that they'll be out of here for. Uh, is, are they NFL draft guys? Have they indicated anything to you? Yeah, well, they they uh, you know all have another year of eligibility left because of COVID. I think some of it will determine on graduation and what they're doing there, but. You know, I think their plans right now would be to, to finish up, graduate, and, and see what they can do at the next level. But, uh, you know, that's always up for, for debate a little bit when, when it really comes down to how they finish the, the semester academically. How much turnover are you expecting on this roster? It's so hard to gauge just oh, no, who's kid. eligible for another year, who's not. Just How do you manage that through the next few weeks? I'm sure you have to figure a lot of that out going into recruiting. Yeah, the first thing you do is look at who's going to graduate here um, and we can replace their scholarship at mid-year. So we probably have eight, nine, possibly ten guys that we'll be able to bring in at mid-year um, you know, if we, if we can can get that done and if a certain couple guys graduate that are kind of on the fence right now. So once they graduate then you can replace their scholarship. So that's that's the first phase of recruiting. Uh, the second thing we'll want to do is sign guys that, that are already committed to us, sign them in, in the early signing period and then tr visit them when the other guys come in to visit in January so they can help recruit for us. Um, but it is hard to figure out, you know, and we, we talk about it all the time. Every time we have a meeting on roster, we talk about, you know, who's, who's going to be back, who are we possibly going to lose, is there anyone here that we think will go into the transfer portal? You know, there's all kinds of questions because it's gotten so wild. You talk about eight, nine, or ten players that you might be able to get in in the mid-year. How important are getting is getting a group of players like that there to where you've got the second half of the, the, the academic year to kind of help flatten the learning curve and bring them along? It, I mean, it's important. It, it helps, number one, with that, the learning curve and, and getting acclimated to ac academics here. It helps with your numbers in spring ball. You know, you always worry about having enough numbers in spring ball to get the scrimmage snaps that you need, get the physical work that you need. So it, it helps a lot there. Last year we didn't have to worry about numbers. We had, you know, so many guys back. But this year it's, it's going to be an issue. We're going to have to replace some of them for sure. Um, but we're also not going to take someone we don't think can come in and, and start and come in and play right away. So whether we fill all those spots is yet to be determined too because we're not going to fill them just to fill them. Um, we're going to try to, you know, improve our roster. That's you always try to go out and out recruit the guys that you have here. You change anything about the way you recruit this going into this year? And I was just well, we have a little bit already, you know, as far as the the freshmen and and the areas and and that. But uh, you know, I think the big thing will be how we replace these guys and then go from there as as whether it's going to be junior college or transfer portal or um, high school. They've made new rules with the transfer portal now, which, you know, there'll be some consideration there uh, as far as if I take a guy out of the transfer portal, he counts on my scholarship list until he graduates or his years of eligibility are up, no matter what, no matter if he quits and wants to go sleep all day. He still gets the scholarship until he's, you know, done or counts against you at least until he's done. So that's that's kind of a, a, a dirty issue, I think, as far as what the NCAA is doing. They're giving these players a transfer portal, and now they're trying to penalize a school for taking them. So it's kind of like, uh, why don't you just cancel the transfer portal? But they're kind of hiding it. They're sneaking. They're being sneaky about it. It's, uh, I don't think it's right, you know, but that's what they're doing. They didn't ask me. I like that. <laughs> Sleeping all day. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> How about you? How much have you, you you have success those first two seasons, lead them to the playoffs, and um, how, how has this season been for you? Just being back in the in the coaching and everything, and getting full go, 
Uh, how trying is it? How much fun are you still able to enjoy this? Course? Yeah, I mean, it's trying. You know, losing is trying. There's no question about that. But you try to learn from it, grow from it, and understand that, you know, hopefully our players can, can learn from it. And, you know, they're going to have struggles that are more important than football after this. And hopefully they learn something this year to stick with it, keep fighting, keep working hard, and good things will eventually happen. So uh, I see it more as a learning uh, season than anything else. What about the, um, the outside, the, just the fans and the, the image of the program? Because going into the season, it was all fired up trying to get so many NCAA trips in a row. Then you have this little bit of a speed bump. Are you concerned about trying to get the, the interest put back up again? Yeah, it puts it right back in our in our 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 lap. We got to go out and play well, and I think we have some good um, you know support and recruiting, good momentum in recruiting. We've got to turn that into production on the field and wins. It's it's always our job to put fans in the stands. Coach, there's a local kid who tweeted out yesterday uh, from Glendale. He's the sack holder. Uh, Cooper Roy, he said he's transferring here. He's going to admit to you guys. Is that something you can talk about? Or you said there's certain rules or whatever? Yeah, certain rules don't allow me to talk about recruits. So, sorry about that. Okay, well, that's my first one. So I didn't ask. <laughs>